Hello everybody, this video is going to cover half-life and half-life calculations. Half-life is the time it takes for a radioactive substance to decay into its products. And what we do is we measure the time it takes for half of the material to decay. So you can see after no half-lives, when you start, you have 100% of your radioactive sample. When one half-life goes by, you only have 50% left that's radioactive. After another half-life, half of that decays, and now you only have 25% of your radioactive substance. And it just keeps going every time half decays, and you end up with less and less that's radioactive. Some half-lives are very, very short, milliseconds. Some half-lives are very, very long. They could be millions of years. It just depends on the specific radioactive material that you're looking at. I would never expect you to know what the half-life is for a specific element. You would either be told it in the problem, or it might be what you're calculating for. But I'm not going to ask you to memorize a bunch of half-lives. We often like to graph the half-life. This is what a half-life graph would look like. You have time down here on the x, and you have the amount that is still radioactive on the y. Sometimes it might be how many atoms, sometimes it might be grams, you just have to look and see. You can see we started with one million up here. When we cut that in half, after one minute, we have 500,000. Half of it has decayed, and we're left with half that's radioactive. I can see that one minute has passed by looking down here on the, on the x-axis, right? So you can use a graph to try to figure out what your half-life is. You see where you start, you come down to half that amount, and you see at what time that occurred. You can see that the length of the half-life is always the same. If I cut this in half to 250,000, it took one minute to get to that point, right? Took one more minute to cut that in half, one more minute to cut that in half, all the way down. In math class, you often learn that you can't, you'll never get to zero, right? You just keep cutting it in half over and over and over. You get smaller and smaller and smaller. It's a little different here though, because there is an actual conceptual real life particle that we're dealing with. If you get down to two atoms and one decays and you only have one left, eventually that will decay. So in half-life, you will technically get to the point where you have no more radioactive substances. Sometimes people don't like that because that's a little bit different than what you learn about in your math class, but this is science, right? A little bit different. Sometimes instead of a graph, they'll give you a chart like this. They'll tell you what the half-life number is, how much time has passed, show you how much is remaining. Sometimes one of these numbers or one of these rows might be blank and you have to fill that out. Sometimes they'll just be asking you to read the chart. So that's another way we might do these problems. If we wanted to calculate the amount left when we don't have access to a graph or we don't have access to a chart, or maybe we want to know how much has passed after 1.3 half-lives or 3.04 half-lives, then there's an equation that we can use instead. The equation looks a little complicated. We have some subscripts, we have some exponents. Let's walk through and take a look. So AE is the amount that you end with that is still radioactive. AS is the amount that you started with. Since it's half-life and we're interested as things are cut in half, that's why we put either a 0.5 or you might see people put an actual one-half fraction over here. And then n is the number of half-lives that have passed. Not the length of the half-life, it's the number of half-lives. How many times have we been cutting this in half? 
Sometimes you're not going to be told the number of half-lives. Sometimes you might have to calculate it yourself. To calculate what n is, we use this little equation here. n is the time that has gone by, how much time has passed, how much time has elapsed, and we divide it by h. h is the length of one half-life. So in your calculator, these can get a little bit messy because you have multiplication, you might have some fractions, you have exponents, your exponent might be a fraction. So be very careful with things like parentheses and order of operations. You gotta practice the calculator portion as well. Sometimes we may not ask for how much is left over, but instead we might ask for the percent that is left over. If you remember, the percent is the part of a whole. So if AE is the part that you have left, and AS is the whole amount you started with, if you just rearrange this equation, you can find your percent that is left over. So the percent that is still radioactive will be these two numbers divided by each other times 100. And remember this would be the same as 0.5 to the n. I see sometimes people forgetting the 100%, the so just be, you know, multiply by 100, so just be a little bit careful. Sometimes people will get a question that feels like they are missing a lot of numbers, and it's because it's actually a percent problem. And you may only need to do 0.5 to the n times 100. So these can actually be quite short questions. Let's do some practice. If gallium 68 has a half-life of 68.3 minutes, how much of a 160 milligram sample is left after one half-life, after two half-lives, after three half-lives? So you can do this in your head, can't you? You don't technically need to use the equation. You could just divide this in half. So you go from 160 down to 80, then it divides into 40, and then 20. So you don't really need to use this equation if it's a full number of half-lives. Some people like to use the equation every time so that they never have to think about it. It just slows you down a little. You may not have to. If you wanted to use the equation, you would plug in your numbers like this. Right? You started with this amount times 0.5 to one half-life. After two half-lives, well, it was your starting amount times 0.5 to the two gave you 40. So you can see that either way, we get the same answer. One more half-life goes by, chop that in half again, you get 20. Okay. What about this one? Cobalt-60 with a half-life of five years is used in cancer radiation treatments. If a hospital purchases a supply of 30 grams, how much would be left after 15 years? So this time we're gonna use our equation. They t we're looking for how much is left. They told us how much we started with, but they did not tell us the number of half-lives. We have to figure that out ourselves. 15 years is going by, and each half-life was five years. So when I set that up into my exponent, that's what my equation will look like. 30 times 0.5, raised to the power of 15 divided by 5. The time that has passed divided by the length of a half-life. And you get your final answer. Some people prefer to calculate n separately and then punch in the final number here. Just be very careful if you're having to do any rounding. Rounding a little tiny bit on any part here can get you a pretty different number. So I'd be very careful if you're doing any rounding. You can just make your calculator do it all in one step, okay? All right, let's do another one. 
why don't you try this one? Pause the video to give yourself a moment to figure it out. All right, so we started with two milligrams. We're gonna multiply that by 0.5. The time that has passed was 133.5 days, and the length of the half-life was 44.5. Be careful that you don't mix up which one is T and which one is H. I see a lot of people get those backwards and then they get the problem wrong. It's not always gonna be the bigger number on top and the smaller number on bottom. So you do need to read the story of the question to make sure you put the right number in the right place. Okay, calculate that. And you get that you will be left with 0.25 milligrams, just a little bit left. Now, solving for AE, pretty straightforward. Solving for AS, pretty straightforward. Solving for the percentage, pretty straightforward. If I ask you to solve for the number of half-lives that have gone by, or I ask you to solve for the length of a half-life, or the time that has passed, gets a little bit trickier because now I'm asking you to solve for an exponent. And sometimes people forget how we solve for exponents. You've learned this in math class, so let's go over how we do that. When we wanna solve for an exponent, what we need to do is use logarithms. So let's walk through how we would rearrange this equation to solve for our exponent. The first thing you wanna do is you wanna get this piece all by itself. So divide both sides by AS to isolate the piece that has the exponent. It will look like this. Now what we have to do is we gotta bring down this exponent. We need to rearrange this using logarithms so that it's something we can actually solve for. When you take the log of both sides, since we always do things to both sides, your exponent comes down into the front. So it'll be log of this equals your exponent times log of whatever your base was, our, right? Our base was 0.5 here. So log of AE over AS equals your exponent log of 0.5. If I were you, I would just write this down in your notebook. It will save you time to just memorize this format instead of having to go through and do the algebra every time. If you're super good at math and you're super fast at logarithms and you got it down memorized good, then great, you just work it out on your own. The rest of you that don't like logarithms, that forget how they work, then just memorize it, okay? Once you're in this form, then you can plug everything in and solve for whatever piece you're interested in, okay? Let's try a problem where we have to solve for an exponent. Let's use our logarithms. The half-life of polonium-218 is three minutes. If you start with 20 grams, how long before only 1.25 grams remains? You have your fancy little equation. You try to plug the numbers in and you try to solve for t. You're trying to solve for the time that has gone by. Pause the video if you need time to do that. All right, let's see how it went. I ended with 1.25. I started with 20. I don't know the time that has gone by, but I know that each half-life is three minutes. Solve for t, use your calculator, you find out 12 minutes has passed. Now, since this was a full number of half-lives, right, since it was like a full half-life that passed each time, 
you could have just said 20 divided by 2 divided by 2 divided by 2. You could have just done that over and over and over until you got to 1.25. The problem is that won't always work. We don't always have nice perfect numbers. That's why the equation is nice because you'll be able to do this no matter what. Okay. All right, let's do one more. This time, using your fancy equation, I would like you to try to solve for what the length of the half-life was. How long is a half-life for this isotope? Pause the video, plug in your numbers, isolate your missing variable, and figure out what the length of a half-life is, h. All right, this is what you should have gotten. You're going to move that up to the other side, divide it by this on both sides. Careful in your calculator, use parentheses. Don't round stuff too far, and you will find out that the length of this half-life was 3.8 days. All right. So this is how we do a variety of half-life problems. Sometimes they have little stories attached to them, like you have a fossil and you're trying to figure out how old it is, right? The story is just to make it a little more interesting. The math is going to be the same. You'll get used to a variety of formats, but they're all going to use the same basic equations. Be on the lookout for small things like Maybe one of your lengths of time was given in days and one was in seconds. Or maybe one of your masses was in milligrams and one was in grams. So be on the lookout for small little things like that. But that's about it for this topic. Okay? All right, everybody, that was it. I hope this was helpful. Bye.